Welcome to Scary Savannah and Beyond. It's that time of the month again where we release a bonus Patreon episode onto our regular feed. And this one is going to be from our Cryptids A to Z series. And following the alphabetical list of states, this one's going to be the state of Alaska. So please check it out and enjoy the bonus content. And you can find more at our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Scary Savannah. Welcome to Scary Savannah and Beyond. This will be episode two of our Patreon exclusive series, Cryptids A to Z, as in the alphabetical order of states. I'm still waiting to see what you do with Z. Who said there is a Z episode? <laughs> Why I'm thinking is it A to Z? I think we'll probably get canceled before we get that far, so I haven't <laughs> really had to worry about it, you know? Well, there's a few A's, so. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of A's around here. Because you know? <laughs> we love the Braves. We watch the Braves, right? Not tonight. Not tonight. So this is when we're recording our episode. It's an off night. So go Braves. We started this series because it seems there's a wealth of creepy monsters and legends all over the United States. And we're covering them from A to Z. So is it the monsters that are A to Z or the states? I'm confused. Yes, Okay. In that order, actually. <laughs> Last week, we covered the great state of... Alabama. Alabama. So... Can't say it like a... Uh, Alabama. freaking Bama. <laughs> yeah. You're an Ala freaking Bama. There's no, no way, way this is not going to trial. Yeah. <laughs> so, next up on the alphabetical list is the frigid alaska and i bet you would love to go up there and visit this one in person wouldn't you never so the first creature on our list is the mysterious kodiak dinosaur not like the kodak dinosaur the camera dinosaur like the dinosaur that would be cooler mm, it would be cooler it could self-develop itself it could maybe you could take a picture of itself because guess what Regarding this and most other creatures that we're talking about. They've never captured a picture of it? Oh, they say they have. Oh. But then you don't see it. Do you have it. any pictures of it? No. Oh. But I've got pictures of what artists think it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's also known as the Kodiak Sea Monster. And I've seen that in several sources. This creature appears to live in the seas around Kodiak Island in Alaska which is south of Anchorage. And I will show you a map right now showing you where Kodiak Island is. Good, because I had no idea where Anchorage was. Yeah, I actually didn't either. Or anything in Alaska. I only know that the capital is Juneau. That's all I know. I thought it was Nome. No, it's Juneau. Oh. I know capitals, Juneau. and I know this. What's the capital of North Dakota? North Dakota? Pierre. Uh, I guess you're right. I it's have no not. idea. That's South Dakota. Oh, well, you could have just lied to me, <laughs> you know. So the story goes like this. In 1969, a shrimp boat that was outfitted with sonar equipment encountered a massive creature. It was so large. Bismarck. Bismarck. By the way, just came to me. Uh -huh. No Google searches, right? Did you see my hands move? I guess the camera saw You all. would have seen it. It would have. It just came to my brain. I know the state capitals and just they're somewhere in my brain. It was so large that their only thought of what it could be was... A dinosaur? Yes, you guessed it. On April 15th, 1969, a 65-foot fishing vessel named the MV Mylark was dragging for shrimp off the coast of Raspberry Island, which is near Kodiak Island. They've got some cool names for islands, at least. It sounds delicious and mm -hmm. photogenic all at the same time. Yeah. This vessel was outfitted with a sonar device known as a Simrad... EH-2A, not to be confused with the Simrad EH-1A that I know all of us are very <laughs> familiar with. Yeah, oh, that's what I was thinking they had. Totally So different. they upgraded the 2A. Yeah, totally different technology. Okay. There's a lot of technology. It's like all these shows we watch on TV where every single thing they sell on the home shopping or QVC, it's got 
technology. Oh yeah. The like, shoe has technology in it. Like the dish racks have technology. Mm-hmm. They do. Yeah. I think the chicken rolls have technology too. Yeah. It's like this food comes with a special <laughs> crystallized technology to heat it. Everything has technology. And as we all know, the Simrad EH2A came with a little X Street technology. And it's used to help the fishermen track schools of fish. I don't know why they would need that if they're fishing for shrimp. Maybe I guess because shrimp like congregate near schools of fish, I think. That's That sounds like a good. So if they can find a school of fish, they might find shrimp. That's a plausible theory, but since I don't know how shrimping or fishing works, I can't say. Well, we're going to go with that. Okay. It sounds very reasonable. (laughs) This device was actually left on even when they weren't using it. And it seems that one of the. Kind of like you do my um, cruise control. Well, I leave cruise control on at all times. I know. In my vehicle. That's what I'm saying. I guess it's exactly like the way I do cruise control. Yes. You, you, know, use, you have procedural. it on in my car when I get in it and it's on and I'm like, why is this on? I don't like lights on my dashboard. Well, it's the same. Like I like to leave the seat warmer on in your car and you turn it off and you're like, well, it might stop working if you just leave it on all the time. Yeah, it could. Well, so could my cruise control and I might want to use it You've one day, used one cruise time. Control before and you know I've it. never, but if I did and I went to turn it on and the button didn't work. Then what? I don't know. I guess you'd be mildly upset. <laughs> I'd be furious. Furious. This is the first time in over 20 years I've turned this button on and it ain't working. Exactly. I wasn't actually even going to use it. I wasn't going to use it. I just it, wanted, I to, just make wanted sure to know it, still it was there. Worked. It seems that one of the operators saw something strange. The device was indicating that a 200 foot object was below them at a depth of about 55 fathoms. That means and- nothing to me. And before you ask, which you obviously aren't going to, since it means nothing to you, baby. Nothing I need at you all. to explain it because 55 fathoms, 55 gallons. Yeah. I don't know. Well, as everybody knows, 55 fathoms is roughly 330 feet. Okay. That I can understand. And by everybody, I mean Google. That's too deep for and me. And the script as I wrote it. As this is not a common occurrence, they decided it was something that should be recorded. I read that they were actually able to get a picture of the creature. And of course, guess what happened to the picture? It fell off into the ocean. It doesn't say that specifically, but it might as well be the case because it has been lost. I I think they had like a Polaroid Kodak. (laughs) And it popped right out. And it just went right into the ocean. And that was the last of the film. And so. Well, they said like everyone else has cameras, but nobody's got any more film because (laughs) we're taking pictures of Jenkins on the poop deck. Yes. Do fishing boats have poop decks? So I've been told. What is a poop deck? I have no idea. Somebody tell us what a poop deck is. You just swab that thing, I guess. Yeah, swab it. Swab (laughs) it. So it's extremely convenient that the photographic evidence was lost, don't you think? I think so. Yeah. What do you think might possibly be approximately this size and located in this part of the world? Layla. That's actually a really good guess. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of that. She fits the bill. Yeah. 200 feet long, <laughs> hanging around food, yep. like fish. Yep. So conjecture by skeptics is, is that what they photographed was probably a well. Yeah. What else could be that big in the ocean? Other than Layla. Other than Layla. And that would seem to make sense as it's conceivably the only thing that would be that large that they know of that they could locate unless there's some enormous sea creature they haven't seen before, yeah. which is possible. It comes down to eyewitness testimony. The operators of the sonar from the ship claim that the creature in no way resembled any species of well or anything else that they'd ever seen before in those waters. What I know from true crime is that eyewitness testimony is highly unreliable. You sound very lawyerly saying like that. Like you're just trying to destroy my case right before my very eyes. I am. Like you can, they have like done all these tests and stuff and people tend to see what they want to see sometimes. Yeah. Or remember it. Remember differently it differently. Or maybe even how they saw it. Mm-hmm. You've seen that on that show. Um, you remember that show they would do something and like wear something obvious to see how many people would remember it. And then like half of them didn't remember correctly. I remember that show, and it's interesting it called, how it your really brain cool. deceives you. Yeah. It's not even, maybe you do see something, but then you can be convinced yeah. into thinking you saw something that maybe you didn't see, yeah. and then you just believe that that's what you saw. Mm-hmm. 
I think it'd be stuff like they'd have a person, something would be happening and they would have some random person or something walk by Mm -hmm. and not draw attention to it, but just have it go by. And then they're like, did anyone notice the guy in the yellow tuxedo walk through this picture? Yeah, or like someone in a bear costume or just something like completely out of the ordinary. Yeah. And people would be like so distracted, like they would do like something as a distraction, like a fight or something. And then people wouldn't even see the obvious thing that they were trying to get them to see. Just to prove that eyewitness testimony is unreliable. Reliable. And it is unreliable. There was a book written by Ivan T. Sanderson titled Alaska's Sea Monster. He was told about this event by a friend named Captain Stanley Lee, who sent him a clipping from a story that had been published in the Kodiak Mirror. He went about gathering all the info on this story that he could. According to information that he was able to accumulate, the sonar hit, which was approximately the size of a well, had clearly defined features not typically seen on these types of creatures. These are Sanderson's words, as I envision them. (laughs) Imagine the sonar's operator surprised when the machine suddenly presented him with a clear silhouette of an enormous creature between 150 and 180 feet long with two pairs of flippers, an extended tapering tail, and a long, slender neck capped by a rather snub-nosed head. Oh, that sounds cute, though. It's basically the description of a dinosaur. Basically. I think it was Plesiosaurus or something. I may have just made that term up. I think I've heard of it. Maybe Uh, it's like your eyewitness testimony bleeding into my brain. I believe it happened. (laughs) I've heard that word before. I think I saw one out here on the ocean, (laughs) on the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. He was even able to get a copy of the now lost strip of graph paper that came from this sonar reading. The echogram showed a silhouette that gives all the dinosaur-like features that the sonar operators had claimed to have seen. Sanderson took this to the manufacturer of the sonar, but they refused to confirm its authenticity, claiming that there were some defects on it that made its genuineness questionable. So they think they doctored it? Either that or they're part of the conspiracy. Oh, okay. After this response, he was able to get the help of multiple experts in a variety of fields. All agreed that the readout had not been tampered with. Okay. And I say all this to say what this indicates to me is that there is a long necked dinosaur like creature off the coast of Alaska. Furthermore, it obviously can't be ruled out that this thing eats ships and breathes fire and is currently plotting to take over the earth. How in the world do you come up with this? I actually had big alien take my collect (laughs) call. They were reluctant to divulge more information than that. I don't believe they would take your call. These claims clearly haven't been verified by an outside source, so you'll just have to take my word for it. I don't think I will. So when we go on an Alaskan cruise, I'll take my camera, and then we're going to go get proof then. You know I'm never doing that. Someday you will appreciate the cold. Not in this lifetime. So you're saying that after we die... We can go on an Alaskan cruise? That's the only way I'll go. Well, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. In the year 2130 for her and 2023 for me, we're going to go on a cruise to get you that firsthand evidence. No. So that brings us to cryptid number dose. This creature can be found in the coastal region of Alaska, and it's actually more than one monster. It's an entire race of monsters. Cool. (laughs) <laughs> what we're talking about is the Kustaka, and these beasts are just terrifying by name. Do All you I know, can think of is something from like the Lion King. What the, is this? Do you know what that name sounds like it might translate to? Mufasa? Uh, blood demon? Blood demon. Actually, it's loosely translated as land otter man. That's so much better. It's terrifying, right? Where do you find this stuff? <laughs> I apparently have too much time on my hands. Also, they are terrifying. Sounds terrifying. It's said that they are shapeshifters and are capable of assuming human form in addition to that 
of the fearsome otter. So you could be one of these otters. One thing that the stories don't seem to agree on is whether these creatures are good or evil. In some legends, they enjoy nothing more than tricking sailors to their watery doom. Others say they are helpful and often save people from a freezing death. There are even stories that they can transform humans into one of their own. That would be epic. I'm a kushtaka. Like, imagine, like, you just turn into an otter. (laughs) I can go into the ocean and I don't even get cold anymore. I know, that's so cool. But the freakiest thing is that some say they mainly prey on small children. Okay, that's not cool. But this is mainly thought to be because the locals would say this legend to keep their kids from wandering too close to the ocean. It makes sense. Kind of like how we keep ours out of the streets. And yeah, by telling them about the Kushtaka. No, we tell them about Renee Rondalia. That's what I would have told our Don't kids if they were dark. younger. Yeah. Stay out of the road. You know, if Renee <laughs> spends his days and nights. You get hung up in a tree like a squirrel. Yeah, watch out. Don't play basketball out in that street. Mm-mm. It's dangerous. Its call is said to be a high-pitched three-part whistle in a low, high, low pattern. Hey, your dad can do that. Oh, my dad might be a Kushtaka. <laughs> he might be. He sounds just like he fits the bill. Yeah. He's got a weird name, Kushtaka. <laughs> it's probably Inuit for granddaddy. <laughs> probably. Not otter person. These creatures are most often said to be malevolent creatures and are always at war with the humans they share territory with. I just with. can't seem to be afraid of an otter, though. An otter man. It's not just an otter. It's a half so it otter, looks, half man. So it looks half otter, half man. Like, what part's the otter? I'm just assuming the upper part. I don't know. <laughs> He's walking around. Hopefully they wear, like, a loincloth or something, too. I hope too. so. Oh, no. Look at that otter man. <laughs> I'd be this scared of that so for a whole weird. other reason. Yeah, this is so weird. <laughs> they will imitate the screams, supposedly, of a baby or a woman to lure victims to the river. Once they have them there. So you got this giant otter man screaming like a baby or a woman. This is this is great. How is, how is there no video of this? I can't believe there isn't a Major League Baseball team with this as their mascot. That would be cool. It would be like the Ottawa otter men. <laughs> or the Kansas City Kushtakas. <laughs> it could work. It could work. I got to trademark that before it happens. But. Yeah. So once they have their victims at the river, they proceed to tear them to shreds or turn them into another kushtaka. So they turn them into an otter. Man. What if you're a woman, though? Do you get turned into a man? Maybe you're a kushtaka it. Oh, okay. So we don't know if it's male and female. They're just otter and man. Yeah. Roughly translated, of course. Okay. But don't worry. There are ways to combat the kushtaka, and they include the use of copper and fire always keep copper handy that's a very important way to be in this area you never know when you need a handful of coins oh i could use pennies yeah or in a pinch like what do you do just throw them at them uh i think you just show it to them oh okay scared of it look at this penny (laughs) it's shiny abraham lincoln doesn't like you or in a pinch you can apparently also present them with urine they hate that too So maybe you are a kushtaka. (laughs) That's gross. If you just carry a cat litter box with you, you'll be fine uh, because nothing stinks more than cat urine. That is true, but I'd rather fight a kushtaka than carry around cat litter. I hate cat litter. Yeah. Come on, otter man. Just take me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm over this. Turn me. I don't have a penny in my pocket. I'm just doomed. Yeah. So if you ever find yourself in Alaska. I won't. And you hear a baby screaming. I won't. Or a three-tone whistle. I might hear that from your dad, but that would be here. my dad. (laughs) Maybe a kushtaka. Make sure you pull out that big pile of pennies that you carry there in your pocket because you listen to our podcast. My pockets are fake, though. So And learn how to protect yourself if you're a man and have cargo shorts. Yeah, because if you're a woman, your pockets might hold two pennies, and I don't know how much that's going to stand up against um, It makes you wonder how big a kushtaki is. How many pennies do you need? Between one and five, I would would guess. Maybe there's some magic number they're scared of. We'll say four. You need to do more research. Make sure you carry four pennies with you. 
Uh, we're all about saving lives. Let us know the next time you encounter a Kushtaka if four pennies was sufficient for you to protect yourself from being changed. What I don't understand is like there's always been these legends of all these things. And I can understand how people didn't get pictures or videos of them back in the 70s and the 80s and even the 90s. But now every single person in America has a smartphone. You think he's in little children up by the ocean in Alaska? Yes. Have smartphones. Three year olds have smartphones. One of those fishermen has a smartphone nowadays. So why are there no videos of this monster? I want to see an otter man. Well, when we go on Alaskan cruise, we can I go try would find almost them. be willing to go if I was guaranteed I could get a picture of one of these things. An otter man, just yeah. to see which half is the otter I've and which half to is see the this. man. Yes. Or maybe it's like one side is otter and That's the other side is better, man. Better, but not much. It would be strange. But, yeah. you know, being able to protect yourself with cat urine also sounds like a weird way to defeat a monster. Like, who even came up with that? Like, uh, how did they discover that? Like, their last resort was just peeing on the thing. <laughs> Quick, it's like a jellyfish. <laughs> just pee on it. <laughs> and somehow it ran away. It I was think I either would too. a Kashtuka or a granddaddy. We're not sure which, <laughs> but they're both scared of urine. And that's going to bring us to the last cryptid of the night. And this one's probably the creepiest of all. It's called the Colopollock. And I'm probably butchering that. So I'll put the word on the screen so that you can see it. All these words are Inuit words because it's a indigenous group of people in Alaska who surely don't speak my dialect. And that is how they spell that. This legend comes from the Inuit people who live in a frigid, icy land. And this monster is a form of a mermaid, but it's not what you think of when you think of a mermaid. You think of the red hair and stuff, right? No, I think of like purple and blue with dark hair, like the ones we see around here. We've never seen a real mermaid around here, though. Not a real one, but like art. Ah, you would think. Like on our bathroom wall. You think they'd be attractive yes. or, or interesting to look at and not horrific monstrous human right. creatures, which is what this one's going to be. Okay. They're described as aquatic humanoids with scaly, bumpy skin. And it's also said that they have fins coming out of multiple parts of their bodies, like their necks and mm-hmm. their arms and legs and presumably somewhere on the face. But why do... Because that's what mermaids do in real life. They're monsters. All the legends of mermaids make them monsters. I know, but like sirens were pretty. Until you get up close to them. Oh, and then and they they're like a monster. Their true identity. They're like a monster. The, uh, what were you in the shadows? Is that what? Yeah, that was a nightmare. <laughs> and also the movie Cabin Boy. Oh, yeah. Had that too. That was funny. Another great movie. Their hands are predictably webbed, but sport long claws. All the better to hunt with. Like most boogeyman myths, these creatures are said to kidnap misbehaving children. What for? What do they want with them? Well, I'm about to tell you. Okay. These creatures are also said to carry almotics. I probably mispronounced that as well. So I'll put that word on the screen, which is similar to a parka, but designed to carry a child. It said they wear these so that when they snatch a child, they can stuff it into it when they steal away with it. Convenient. Inuit parents warn their children about this monster all the time. And this serves a purpose. It's to try to keep them away from the water's edge. We see a lot of that. Yeah. A lot of these mermaids are down here trying to keep (laughs) children away. (laughs) If you want to know if one of these creatures is nearby, (laughs) because this is a question that you will get asked frequently when you are hunting the Qualipolic. If you want to know if one of these creatures is nearby, they are said to emit a humming noise. And it's your only warning. You do that all the time. Could I be a mermaid in disguise? Maybe. It's possible. I'm not particularly attractive or drawing in any way. So I don't think I have the skills that mermaids need to have, but maybe I'm one of those baby stealing kind of mermaids. (laughs) It just shows up on the shore and hums like an electric lamp. (laughs) Also, is it humming like that or humming like a person hums? 
Oh, I didn't even think about it like that. I just assumed it sounded like, you know, an incandescent light bulb. Well, see, I was expecting it to sound like what you do that annoys me. Mm-hmm. Except I sound like more of a drum set than a Hummer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Humming is designed to draw children to the water's edge so that they can be trapped. So I'm assuming that it would be singing type humming and not incandescent That's light bulb humming <laughs> or fish tank humming like yeah, what we got going on behind They're it. not like flies. They're not attracted to like random noises. Random noises. Our dogs are. They are. They hear a car door slam five blocks away. They're barking at that. Yeah. There's some debate on what they do with the children they steal. Some say they devour them. Others say that they put them under a spell in a cave and feed on their energy to remain immortal. How do they keep the child alive, though? Uh, assume that they feed, feed it them a fish? steady diet of fish. A lot of questions for these people. Most of them are probably not going to have good answers. I still have questions. Please. There's got to be an easier way than kidnapping a child because so that just seems annoying. To keep immortality? Yeah, it's got to be an easier way. Did you buy it on, say, a home shopping network or something? Yeah. Is it technology? Should. Yeah, there's got to be a technology for that. It's a lot easier that way. Just purchase it. Six, six easy, easy payments, payments of $6. $6. <laughs> you can get three of them like the mini waffle maker we saw. They're useless, according to but you. you said we have one. We do. And I did use it back when we used to make keto waffles before we discovered that they already make them in the freezer. And all I got to do is put them in the toaster. Yeah, there's actually that that technology has advanced to the point now that you can buy it. Yeah. Already pre-made. So that's the end to another set of rather uplifting stories that we'll be presenting to you on this episode. And I hope you enjoyed the great state of Alaska. I enjoy it from afar. A very afar, afar. Yeah, it's beautiful, but I never want to go there. It's so far away. It's in that, like, where they have, like, S- sunlight for six months out of the year and then I'm not that kind of person. You would person. like the night portion of that though. For six months? Yeah. You could just sleep for six months. You always said you wanted to be sleeping beauty. Well, yeah, but I like you the sunshine. You sit around in your fancy pink robe with your new black high-heeled slippers. <laughs> what is the point of high-heeled slippers? I look cute. They do have a fuzzy thing on them too, don't they? Yeah. A little pom-pom or something. Yeah. You're truly ridiculous. <laughs> That'll wrap up episode number two of Patreon. So stay tuned as we continue with the great state of whatever comes after Alaska. What next. comes next? It's another Is it A-word. Arkansas? I think so. Yeah, I think it might be. We'll find out. It we'll, might be Arkansas. We'll or, check it. Or maybe we'll just change gears and go ahead and skip right to Z. <laughs> we'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>